trespass. I've been a detective for 30 years by now, and still the most disturbing case I've ever worked on was the Davis family disappearance. Every family member and friend we interviewed said they were the image of an ordinary family. They went to church, the daughters played soccer and did well in school, they had a barbecue every Sunday, etc. No one knew what to think when they all disappeared without a trace. The Davis family consisted of Mark, the father, Leela, the mother, and Sophia and Ashley, the daughters. Sophia had stopped showing up to school one day, and then a few days later, Ashley had also stopped attending class. This was the first indication that something was wrong, but Mark and Leela had still been going to work and hadn't reported anything. It was assumed that they were sick, and that's why they were missing class. And then, Mark and Leela missed work and did not host their weekly barbecue. Family and friends had failed to make contact for two days before a call was made to the police. I was put on this case after the police failed to find the family at their home. Once I had been assigned, a police officer came to talk to me. I remember he had a grave look on his face and was very stiff when he came to brief me. He told me there was more to this case than just a missing family and showed me the body cam footage from the initial search. Two police officers had entered the house through the front door. Nothing in the living room seemed out of the ordinary. The kitchen, guest room, and master were all the same. Both cars sat in the undisturbed garage. However, when the officers were heading upstairs, things became strange. One of the officers was on the stairs when an audible voice of a young girl crying for help was heard. The officers ran upstairs and called out for the girl, but received no response. They began rapidly checking all the rooms, but found nothing. One officer questioned if they had imagined it, but the other officer, who I now realized was the one showing me the footage, insisted that he heard it too. The only room left to check was the basement. What the officers uncovered in this room was a scene from a horror movie. A strange symbol was drawn on the floor in black paint. Chains hung from the ceiling, and several paintings of strange demonic figures were hung all over the walls. There were burnt out candles surrounding the symbol, meaning this room had been used at some point. The officers searched the entire basement, but couldn't find any signs of the family, not even a drop of blood. After the officer left, I pondered what I had just seen. It could have been some cult ritual. In fact, it likely was. But then why was there no blood? Or bodies? It's possible the evidence could have been gotten rid of. But then who was the one removing the evidence? I was intrigued and began researching right away. I couldn't find that symbol anywhere on the internet, or at the library, so I assumed I was dealing with a new religion entirely. All other research efforts were fruitless, so I decided it was just time to go to their house myself. When entering the home, a strange feeling of paranoia went over me. I felt as if I wasn't alone, and that I was in danger. I tried to shake the feeling away and move further in the house. I went straight to the basement. With each step I took down the stairs, I felt colder. It was just as it was when the police were here. I was looking at the paintings when I noticed a particularly chilling painting. It looked like a painting of the Davis family, without eyes. It looked as if the skin had sealed over where their eyes should be. I went to make a note of this on my notepad when a painting fell off the wall next to me. I jumped and then chuckled at myself. Suddenly, an ear-piercing scream erupted right next to me, causing me to run and stumble up the stairs and out of the house. Once I had gotten to the safety of my car, I called for backup. An officer arrived within five minutes, and we went in. Nothing. Absolutely nothing was found. Weeks went by with no news. Then weeks turned to months, and months turned to years. It was as if they vanished into thin air, and all we had for evidence was a strange cult altar in the basement. All notable belongings were still in the house, no noticeable change in behavior beforehand, and no bodies. There was no gory murder scene, no horrific story of abuse, or anything of the sort. Yet this case affected me like no other, due to the strange nature of the disappearance. What I heard in that basement could not have been anything but a human scream. A scream that will haunt my nightmares for years to come.